So guys, hi, it's me with another update again. And I want to show you what the Icelandic Meteorological Office has put on their website because that is quite interesting. So of course they're saying that fissure that has opened is approximately at the moment three kilometers long and it goes from Mount Sudnukur in the south and it stretches towards the eastern part of Mount Stora Stockfell. But I want you to have a look at this picture here. So you see the fissure and there you see the lava how it's flowing so when you look at the picture the lava is flowing more to the right and Grindavik is at the further end of it so but it is a western flow so if you look at the map of Grindavik it's flowing west where the Blue Lagoon and the Swartzengi power plant are it's not directly flowing towards it but these buildings or these infrastructure um, entities are also west of it and you see Mount Thorbjorn here and basically behind the smoke there would be the town of Rindavik you see I think there you can see some lights the lights are still on in town but if you look at the town the area is well lit up by by this eruption and by this magnitude and i said it in my last video what keeps this thing interesting is that the geologist has said one of the geologists has said that there is more magma flowing or being pumped into the tunnel system into the magma tunnels then is actually coming out so that magma seems to be flowing and spreading somewhere else not only only where it's erupting. You have to imagine maybe because I always have that here on my farm, a leaking garden hose, right? That's how I get water to the horses. And now that it has been so cold or someone drives over it, and no matter which ones I buy, contractor, grade, whatever, they, they get leaks and water's coming out. So imagine this eruption here is a garden hose and we have a hole in it. So it's coming out and usually the holes are getting bigger, but there's still water flowing through the hose past that eruption, that leaking part. So, and it's possible that even a hundred feet garden hose has like five, six leaks, but at the end of the hose, there's still water arriving in my water trough that I wanna fill for the horses. And if that is the case here, we don't know where that magma is flowing. And the way that magma chamber under Swartzengi has behaving since we have started watching it since the last eruption, since the magma dike was formed on November 10th. It was noted that once there was an eruption, it immediately started refilling. So it wasn't like maximum elasticity is reached, magma's flowing somewhere else, we're seeing an eruption, and the magma chamber stays low. It started filling up right away. So there is enough magma so that it can flow somewhere else. And that's the interesting part for me, guys. Will we see another fissure opening? The geologist says yes, but where would that be? Because that fissure that we see now has grown to the south towards Grindavik, but also to the north. But the lava is more flowing to the west. And that's the same scenario that we had on December 18th that they said had the eruption lasted a little longer, the lava would have flown over the road Grindavico Vigua. That's the main road that basically is like a south-north road. And on the eruption on January 14th, a lava flow has reached Grindavico Vigua right at the entrance of Grindavik. That's why the electricity lines were damaged and, and the hot water system, the heating system that comes in like overground pipes from the Swartzengi power plant, the lava was just flowing over it. And right on that spot, they were trying to restore the electricity by installing like over the ground, 18 meter high poles to, to bridge a 300 meter wide lava field. So this could happen in Grindavico Vigo too, and that's bad because that road is also a main evacuation road for the area and for Grindavik especially. That's the, the main access road, I would say. 
and the same for the Swartzangi area. So if that road is blocked, at least they can't let any tourists back into the Blue Lagoon and have to make that joke because it just drives me crazy. They, they had to be evacuated again in the middle of the night, so all went well. But if you look at that picture, it's not that far away from the Blue Lagoon. And since we know something else might erupt, and remember January 14th, we had a first fissure that was only 900 meters long. This one is already three kilometers. So kind of same magnitude as on December 18th. But on January 14th, all of a sudden, bloop, we had the southern fissure open right at the doorstep of Grindavik that did burn the houses. That was completely by surprise and something similar might happen now. And if you look at that picture, the Blue Lagoon is not that far away. So I wouldn't go swimming there, um, but I'm sure they'll reopen pretty soon, I guess. But, you know, um, this is basically what's the latest on that. But there's a few other facts that are quite interesting. So it's basically what you're seeing here, these two mountains, that is Stora Stockfell and the Sudnuk in the south. And uh, we also have heard from Vidya Reineson, he's the of, from the office, the head of the Office of Public Defense. And so um, they are investigating the status quo in Grindavik after this eruption has started in the morning, or roughly around 6 a.m. and 2 minutes. And so he says, and that surprises me, um, we have two groups inside Grindavik to check if there are any traces of earth changes and also to make sure that no one is in the town. That is pretty brave because it could still erupt in the town, right? So I would get everyone out. Um, Vidir says that as far as is known, no one was in town last night and it wasn't meant to have anyone in town and they also don't know about it. So he says the situation in Grindavik seems to be pretty good. And so they're systematically investigating whether there are any new cracks formed, new sinkholes, fissures opened, because all these earthquakes, they could have a severe effect, um, even if they're not large. So Vidir hasn't said yet that he can see that there's more infrastructure that has been broken. Um, the electricity is still on in Grindavik, and, and so that's a good thing to see. And so they're also still pushing and driving material for to, to build, to strengthen that defense wall around Grindavik and to also extend it to the east because the last lava flow that was there on January 14th is now changing the hardened lava that is there, is changing the lava flow. So their design of defense walls was for the east is somehow useless so there is a risk that it might flow into town so they had to reevaluate and redesign the eastern part and add some more defense walls there they are investigating and uh, no major damages yet um they are assessing, they are in the process as of assessing, as we all are when we look at this eruption, um, where the lava flow will go. And uh, so one thing he notes is that the fissure is at a quite or fairly favorable location. Um, but, and here comes the but, and listen to what he's saying, that... A lava flow from that eruption is flowing towards Grindavikovegua. As I said, that's the road. And already contractors have arrived at a part of that road. And the intention is to push material like, like rock material to the road. Um, so they have some gaps there. That's the defense wall around the Swartzengi area and for the Blue Lagoon. Um, they're not closing it right away because, of course, it's a major piece of infrastructure to, to have that road. So push the lava material over the road and to, to try to prevent some flow is a big decision. But it seems the contractors 
as they had planned it with the defense well they're on site and if it's needed they'll start to close the gaps around the Swartzengi power plant so it seems that the lava flow is flowing west and it's also flowing a little bit to the north um, and then it will start to flow towards the Swartzengi dikes. So now these dikes will be tested, but also there will be a few hours before the lava flow will have any effect. So what is critical now? How long will this eruption last? The one on January 14th was quite short, but the December 18th eruption was a little longer. So this is the critical point. How long will it last? And will there be other fissures opening? So he says the first task of the morning was to get the Coast Guard's helicopter out and into the air with scientists on board to figure out the exact locations of that eruption. And also they have also run lava simulation models in, in order to be able to assess possible developments um, of that lava flow. And then they will share this information then with everyone. And then another thing, um, the television station, uh, the Icelandic television station, RUV, they have installed a new camera at Swartzengi. And um, I'll put the link in the description and check this out. So huh, they're, they're pointing the camera at Swartzengi and that tells you something, right? So this time Swartzengi is in the critical area. So... I'm glad everyone's out of the Blue Lagoon. I, I really have to say that. And if you check out that camera, the lava is flowing quite fast and it's flowing towards the Swartzengi area. And the Met Office has released um, a satellite radar and that shows um, the ground surface changes between January 23rd and February 20. Um, February 4th, sorry guys. So everything that that's red shows the area of maximum inflation and the gray shading shows an area where measurements were not possible due to variations in snow cover between these images. But you see, this is the area, this is the area around the Swartzengi power plant and the Blue Lagoon. And you can even see the Swartzengi defense wall here. And then you see Mount Thorbjörn and the darker areas with the red lines. You see these are the December 18th eruption and the January 14th eruption. So the new eruption is in that area again, but it's flowing faster towards the Swartzengi area and this is critical and this is what we have to monitor and again better be safe than sorry and I hope I really really hope that they're learning more from this eruption regarding when to close tourist attractions and stuff like this just to be safe because the magma chamber underneath Fort Sengi can also be brittle by expanding and compacting and there could have been an eruption right in there. The scientists have said that this is a possibility. And so it is flowing, it is still going strong. Daylight is slowly coming in Iceland. So then maybe we will be able to see a little more. This is my update with the latest guys. I'll keep updating you during the night. Um, I'm a little bit, I feel like my eyes are twisting because of making one video after the other or so and if I talk some weird stuff once in a while uh, forgive me because um, it is tough I'm, I'm trying to shoot these videos out without um, editing and, and something so it's basically a live um, so that you get the information as quickly as possible so guys if you want to support my channel please 
leave this video a like and subscribe if you haven't yet so that you can always be on the pulse with me, with Silky. So subscribe and click the notification bell, then you know when the next eruption is coming. I was right on the pulse, guys. I sat on my couch with my three doggies and we saw it coming. We Again, we saw the earthquake swarm first and then like, boof, it was already there before I could even understand what's happening so i'll keep you updated stay safe guys whoever is watching my video in the morning good morning enjoy your coffee and i see you very soon i think thank you guys bye bye